1.4 panchayats extension to the scheduled areas act 1996 okay this topic is in news because one day conference was organized to the com to commemorate 25th year of enactment of pisa and is celebrated as a part of azadi ka amrut amrut mahotsav okay so now about this pisa act 1996 okay under this article 243 m states that the fifth schedule areas will not come under the part 9 of the constitution okay now what is this fifth schedule and what is part 9 okay here the fifth schedule deals with the areas which contain 10 states and they are andhra pradesh chatisgarh gujarat himachal pradesh jharkhand madhya pradesh maharashtra odisha rajasthan and telangana okay so the fifth schedule contains 10 st uh, 10 states now fifth and sixth schedules deals with scheduled areas and scheduled tribes is that clear guys so the fifth schedule contains 10 states except am tm that is assam manipur tripura and meghalaya so part 9 deals with panchayat Uh, and municipalities okay so under article 243 m the constitution exempts the fifth schedule areas from part 9 of the constitution but the parliament is empowered to extend its provisions to the scheduled and tribal areas by law without it being considered as an amendment of the constitution okay so here under article 243 m fifth schedule is not under part 9 but by the act passed by the parliament it has the extended provisions of scheduled tribes and scheduled areas so this fifth schedule contains 10 states i have said you and these are the states are here before there would be only nine states and after the formation of telangana present it has 10 states is it clear guys so thus uh dilip singh buria committee okay it recommends pisa act on uh, so on the recommendation of dilip singh buria committee pisa act that is panchayat extension to the scheduled areas act is passed okay it was passed in the year 2000 uh, 1996 for the tribal empowerment and panchayat raj provisions are also extended under part 9 okay and these 10 states are also administered under article 244 where it deals with the administration of scheduled and tribal areas okay article 244 deals with the administration of scheduled and tribal areas and what is article 243 m 243 m states that it exempts the fifth schedule areas from part 9 of the constitution but under parliament under the act passed by the parliament this fifth schedule areas are extended to part 9 okay so that fifth schedule areas contain 10 states so that means in 10 states panchayat raj system is applicable and as per article 244 the tribal areas and scheduled areas are associated with it so as this act extends the provision of panchayat system in the 10th uh, in 10 scheduled states under fifth schedule this act is known as pisa act okay that means panchayats extension to the scheduled areas act i'll repeat it once again as this act extends the provisions of the panchayat system in the 10 scheduled states under fifth schedule this act is known as pisa act panchayat extension to the scheduled areas act so it was launched in the year 1996 and ministry of panchayat raj implements the provisions of the pisa act but 
why PISA Act came. Even though 5th and 6th schedules are present to protect the interests of the tribal people, why again the PISA Act was implemented by the Act of Parliament? Because even though the 5th and 6th schedules protect the interests and safeguards their culture, there are some other rules which disregard the 5th schedule and 6th schedule of constitution. So, and other thing is, all these 10 states will be extended under this PISA Act. Why? Because majority, even Madhya Pradesh is included in these 10 states. Madhya Pradesh is a state where large number of tribal people are present. Okay. And here, the 6th schedule deals with the states of AMTM, that is Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura and Mizoram. But, all these states are not included. So, to include all these states, PISA Act was impl Im implemented. That is one of the reason. And the other reason is to safeguard more about the interests and their culture and also their judicial systems. That is reaching even the Gram Sabhas under the PISA Act. So, for that, uh, for that also, PISA Act was implemented. Okay. All these states contains tribal tribal uh, many tribal areas so pr to protect those tribal people's interests also this fifth schedule was extended under this pisa act is it clear guys okay and the nodal ministry of this is ministry of panchayat raj so the major powers of gram sabha under pisa act here in the pisa act gram sabhas were given more importance because um, Gandhiji once said that the democracy and the ultimate power lies within the people and that power lies in the Gram Sabhas. So, this PISA Act gives more power to this Gram Sabhas where the Gram Sabhas protect and safeguard the interests of the tribal people and scheduled areas and also makes developmental programs for their economic development, social justice and all other uh, development processes. Okay, now we will see about the major powers of Gram Sabhas under PISA. So, to control institutions and functionaries in all social sectors and local plans and to manage minor water bodies, ownership of minor forest produce. Even this is also included in PISA Act. And next is to regulate and restrict sale or consumption of liquor, manage village markets, control money lending to the scheduled tribes. This is very important point guys because the Gram Sabhas themselves maintain the local markets. That is they manage the village markets. They control the consumption of liquor and they regulate and, the rest and restrict sale of some items and goods and they control money lending so all these which are you can see this all these were previously under british control were restricted but now even though after independence even fifth and should uh, fifth and sixth schedule came in constitution to protect the interests of minorities these were not i mean they were not given full freedom so to give extra freedom for them and to for them to develop in in all the aspects pisa act was implemented and under this the gram sabhas regulate and restrict sale control the consumption of liquor manage village markets control money lending to the scheduled tribes this is one of the important point and next is resettlement and rehabilitation and prospecting licenses or mining leases for minor minerals okay so if if uh, imagine if in madhya pradesh people wanted uh, in tribal areas the government wanted to seize that land for coal or some other mines okay so if in that case if the tribes present in that area will not accept govern govern um, mining to happen it will not happen under this pisa act okay the gram sabhas are given the important power you know the major power so if the gram sabhas will cancel the mining in that place it will be cancelled and if they accept 
it is going to be accepted so the ultimate power lies within the gram sabhas and next power of mandatory consultation in matters of land acquisition prevent alienation of land and restore alienated lands so i have said you right so same even in land matters the gram sabhas permission is needed under the the spisa act so this is about this table and next is the provisions of pisa act so all the state legislation on panchayats should be in accordance to their customary laws social and religious policies and traditional management practices okay so in in a particular gram sabha all the panchayats should be in favor of social and religious practices traditional management practices and all those things they will be aware of them right so they have to protect all of them all the customary laws social and religious practices and traditional management practices should be done by this panchayats and next is every village should have separate gram sabha and the third one is every panchayat have reservation based on the community population chairman of panchayats is to be reserved for the scheduled tribes at all levels okay so gram sabha is mandatory and reservation is also mandatory because participation in all sectors is needed especially from the minority like tribes and other scheduled committees so communities so reservation of seats especially for sts are reserved next is the main role of gram sabha under this pisa act is to approve all developmental works in village identify beneficiaries issue certificates of utilization of the funds that means the major responsibility in allocating the beneficiaries is rest with the gram sabhas okay they help in identifying the if uh, you know the perfect beneficiaries uh, or the poorest of the poor people who can be you know availing the maximum benefit from the government so these help in identifying those beneficiaries next is significance of pisa act so here this act empowers gram sabhas to engage in developmental activities and second it helps to reduce the problems of the tribal people builds trust okay and promote integration and the next one is it empowers tribes through gram sabhas to preserve their ecosystem okay as the tribes are the main source to conserve their ecosystem this also encourages the people of the gram sabhas and also the tribes to preserve their connection with ecosystem okay so here actually one incident happened in in the year 2013 the supreme court ordered orissa government to seek gram sabha permission from for bauxite mining why they have to why this odisha government should take permission from this gram sabha generally odisha government is a major major power and gram sabha is the local level power right why this odisha government have to take permission because under pisa act the gram sabha has the ultimate power okay especially in their own lands okay they uh, so the odisha government asked for permission for bauxite mining in kalahandi and rayagada district of odisha so those tribes actually cancelled that permission they did not allow they did not permit the government to do mining in that hills so this is about one of the uh, most important example which protects the eco- eco- ecosystem under this pisa act and the next is this act also protects the interests of the tribes and also their rights
okay this is about the significance of pisa act and next is the challenges in pisa act implementation first is lack of awareness about pisa act among tribal community next is pisa implementation overseen by people lacking understanding of tribal culture and the third is gap in adaptation of pisa in letter and spirit fourth is limited autonomy of gram sabha and panchayats and the fifth is lack of institutional mechanism and enabling ecosystem the last one is non complaint non complaint complaints or violation of the pisa provisions so due to lack of awareness of the scheme the people especially the tribal people can't get the maximum benefit from this act so these are some of the challenges and next we will learn about limitations of pisa act so here even though pisa act strived to protect and respect the interests of the tribals still it was not enacted in four major tribal states those four major tribal states are jharkhand chatisgarh madhya pradesh and odisha see here madhya pradesh has the largest tribal community and it is not even implemented in that area so these are yet to frame so let's see and second point is in most cases the authorities are not concerned over the safeguard of tribal land and con um, connecting gram sabhas for constructing any companies or factories so in that case pisa act is violated and gave more importance to the other acts okay so for example in korba district of chatisgarh the authorities decided to acquire land using the coal bearing act of 1957 so in this aspect pisa act was not given importance okay so under this act they have decided to acquire land in that area but originally under pisa act they should ask for the permission of the gram sabhas seek their permission and then acquire that land with the permission of gram sabha but in minor ma ma uh, so majority of the cases due to lack of awareness among the tribal people and gram sabhas about this pisa act they are the authorities are using other acts and they are just acquiring it so the implementation of pisa act is not effective why because of lack of awareness and the next is pisa act was not implemented properly in in the year 2000 uh, sorry pisa act was not implemented properly this has done by the study done by pisa in oh, one minute this was done by a study of see here poor implementation of law was found by the study which was done by the indian institute of public administration and it highlighted that poor implementation is going on and especially when they studied about uh, about pisa act in andhra pradesh gujarat chatisgarh and jharkhand and orissa there was no particular example of implementing this pisa act for example in kunti district of jharkhand 65% of people's land was acquired and that government did not even give the land back or you know did not even compensate any other thing with that land they just occupied and they were not even concerned about that people so these are this is one of the example about this poor implementation of law so the way forward to implement the recommendations of buria committee it recommended that the extension of pisa act and misa act pisa means panchayat extension of scheduled areas and misa means municipalities extension on scheduled areas under 73rd and 74th amendment act okay to fifth scheduled areas so
even um, so the next one is the remaining states must frame this pisa rules and implement under ministry of panchayati raj model rules of 2009 and next pisa rules should be included in forest rights act that is right to fair compensation and transparency in land acquisition rehabilitation and resettlement act 2003 etc to protect the tribal rights and their culture so when the gram panchayat development plan is prepared the ministry of panchayat raj and ministry of tribal affairs should take a step to develop a model which can protect the interests of the tribal people so that should also be taking place okay to inc- to encourage the pisa act and make it aware by the tribal peoples and next is by reducing the land acquisition in tribal areas and social development programs for capacity building